In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through Chapter 5.1, Living Standards. In this section, we'll be looking at the indicators of living standards. So firstly, we need to know what standards of living is. So this is the social and economic well-being of individuals in a country. The factors include the degree of wealth an individual has, being wealthy means that the individual owns a lot of valuable things, such as money, property, and other resources. The degree of material comfort, access to necessities, and the quality of life. And having a good quality of life means that you are healthy, comfortable, you have good relationship with others, you have opportunities of education and work and freedom of choice, and also happiness that you have everything fulfilled in life. The first indicator is real gross domestic product per head or per capita. What this is, is the real GDP of a country divided by the population of the country. The benefits of using this tool is that it takes inflation into account and also the population size. So the higher the GDP per head, the higher the standard of living of every individual in that country. This does not take into account of regional disparities. Let me give you an extreme example. For instance, in a region, there are full of billionaires, and in another region, it's just all slums. Clearly, in my scenario, the wealth inequality is huge, but if we add every person up together and divide it by the population, this will give us an inaccurate account of the standards of living in the country. The other indicator is the Human Development Index, HDI, and its components. HDI takes into account of healthcare, as this measures the life expectancy at birth. Better healthcare leads to higher life expectancy. Secondly, we have education. According to the HDI, the higher the average years of schooling, the greater degree of human development. And lastly, income levels. The higher the GDP of an economy, the greater the human development is. Now the limitations of HDI is that it does not factor some qualitative factors such as gender inequality and human rights. As to my prior example, there may be some income distribution as the income distribution may be inequitable. So the data itself will lack accuracy for the average person. It does not take into account of environmental issues such as environmental depletion. And lastly, it ignores cultural differences, such as the cultural variations and interpretations of the standard of living. For example, a high standard of living in Vietnam versus a high standard of living in Switzerland looks completely different. Moving on to comparing living standards and income distribution. So in this section, we are going to look at the factors that contribute to the differences of the standard of living and income distribution. The first factor is productivity levels. For example, the productivity levels of a highly skilled worker compared to an unskilled worker in its quantity and quality. The next factor is the role of government. So whether they use the tax revenue to redistribute income to the economy, this raises living standards for all. This will reduce the income inequality within an economy. Another factor is the size of the population. For example, very large and densely populated cities tend to have much higher living standards compared to the rural areas of an economy. The next factor is the distribution of national income. Although the GDP of a country may be very high, but if only a few people hold the majority of the wealth, there will be large gaps between the rich and the poor. Let me give you an example. Say you had a classroom of 50 people, and we counted the amount of money everyone had in that classroom, and this totaled to $10,000. So on average, everyone in the classroom should have roughly $200. But what if I told you, that 10 people in the classroom had $900 in their wallet, which gives us a total of $9,000.
and the remaining 40 people held the remaining $1,000 in the classroom. In this example, you can see that the distribution of income is unequal, as 10 people in the classroom hold on average $900 each, and 40 people in the classroom hold an average of $100 each. The next factor is regional differences, as regional income disparities happen within countries. The general price level is also an important indicator, as inflation increases the cost of living in the country. Countries such as Venezuela saw their currency lose 83.7% of its value in three months in 2024. The next factor is the level of education offered within the countries. There is a high correlation between educational attainment and earnings. This may seem obvious, as education will provide someone skills and knowledge which will increase the quality and quantity of their productivity within the workforce. And lastly, the level of freedom, whether the citizens have civil liberties, political rights, religious freedom and economic rights. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye bye.